Hello, fellow language learners. My name is Jeff Watson. I am from Canada. I grew up near Vancouver, the city of Vancouver. It's in Western Canada. And for the last seven years, I have been living in Latin America. And so, all right, yes, I am an English teacher. I have seven years of experience teaching English, but I am also a language learner just like you. And so I have experienced firsthand the same situations that you have. So I believe that I know what you are going through in order to develop and improve your English. And so I am here thanks to Verbling.com, this incredible website on the internet where they offer free English classes 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes, can you believe it? I'm talking about Verbling.com where anytime of day or night, you can connect and develop and improve and practice your English for free. All right. And so we have some a, a premium member who uh, is taking her spot in the class. Rodrigo is asking about the level of this class. Now, yes, we are going to be reading a story that was written by a native speaker. And so the level of the class will be a little bit advanced. But if you have a positive attitude towards learning, if you will ask me questions so that I can help you, if you will ask your classmates for help, then I think you will do uh, very well this hour. We are going to be reading a story from the Chicken Soup for the Soul series of books, and I have posted the direct link to the document in the Verbling chat box. Please click on that link and download the document so that you can open it on your computer. That way the text will be clear and easy to read. And you can also copy, you can also copy and paste the words that you don't understand into a translator or, if you prefer, an English dictionary to get the definition of the word. And so what I would like to do is to say hello to everyone, if you can tell us where you are connecting from, and then how have you personally celebrated your big birthdays, whatever they are. In the United States, the 21st birthday is important. For some people, the 13th birthday is important. 15th birthday is important, and then I have had the pleasure <laughs> of celebrating my 30th birthday and my 40th birthday. I'm almost at my 50th birthday, so I'm trying to think of something to do. So how do you celebrate big, important birthdays? That's the question. And so, uh, Bane, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Where are you connecting from? Uh, I am from Serbia. That's in Europe. Okay, great. And so, uh, how do you or the people in your family or the people in your country celebrate big, important birthdays? Uh, well, first of all, uh, I'm not sure which birth birthdays are more important than others. So, uh, I consider that <laughs> all the birthdays are equally important. Uh, for Good. me, okay. Yeah, Let great. Let me add. And uh, let's 
uh, I don't consider uh, uh, these occasions as so much important things, you know, in life. Uh, okay. okay, it's uh, beautiful when you have, a, uh, I don't know, reason to celebrate something, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I like to celebrate with, when uh, when I'm feeling like, uh, you know, when I... Uh, I need to celebrate uh, when I have good company, you know, when I am full of energy. So <laughs> okay. sometimes, uh, 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 sorry, uh, am I am I speaking long? No, no. Well, let's let's move on. Uh, but you you express that very well, and thank you for your opinion. I uh, personally, I agree with you for sure. Yeah, oh, great. Uh, thank you. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, the idea. Uh, Sorry, what, what I'm going to do is I'm yeah. going to move on to the next person, though. But but thank you for oh, asking. Okay, yeah, okay. great. No, no problem. No These problem. are sort of short introductions, but uh, you ah, express yeah. that very well. Thank you. And I'd like to say hello to Lamidra Ajub. Lamhidra Ajub. Okay, we we cannot hear you and so I'm going to move on Manel are you there yes hello teacher welcome uh, thank please tell you. us where you're connected from and what do you think okay. of big birthdays well my name is Manel I am connected from Algeria and uh, I personally we don't have like big birthdays in here so mm -hmm. I just uh, I just received gifts from my family and my close friends but no birthday party Okay. Sometimes I get a cake, but <laughs> that's all. <laughs> okay, no, great. That sounds excellent. But you personally, do you remember one of your birthdays as being important? <laughs> no. Do you personally? No? No, well, they were all normal days. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. No, I, I like that idea. Uh, but I still remember when I turned 10 years old and I thought, ooh, now it's <laughs> two numbers. We say double digits. I'm, I'm, I'm in the double digits. I have lived for a decade now. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, and uh, Marcia, hello. Yeah, hello. I, I remember my 15th uh, anniversary. Birthday. No, birthday. Birthday. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, uh, was um, offering uh, a special occasion for uh, the the girls in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a, a big party with family and gifts and everything. But I I'm not keen of a too much party for for that. <laughs> yeah, no, not too much. So, but uh, this is sort of like um, very important birthday for a young woman, correct? So you yeah. did you wear a very nice dress and was there a big <laughs> party? Um, a hairdresser and everything. It's, you had um, hair, hair styled. You yeah. had your hair styled and yeah, okay, right. It's it's a very a uh, big birthday in Mexico in in their culture, the fifteenth birthday for the girls. Yeah. Yeah, in Brazil. Too. Okay, great. And Mario, welcome. Hello. Uh, I, how are you, Jeff? Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, uh, I'm connecting from France for people who do not know me again. Um, and uh, I don't really like big. Uh, party about birthday things, but it's nice when things it's uh, really well set. But uh, I, me uh, personally, I tend to forget my own birthday. Okay. <laughs> but uh, it's nice when people remember that it's mine. Uh, for example, okay, so I try to not forget uh, my. Uh, uh, my, uh, the birthday of my children. So it's, ah, yes. yes your your children's it's, birthdays. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's kind of important. Yes, yeah. but uh, <laughs> it's okay. But you, we don't usually make big parties. Uh, just a normal thing, a cake and uh, just blow on uh, some candle yeah. and, and then that's yeah. it. Blow out <laughs> some candles. Yeah, and we say to, to have the general verb in English is to have a big party, to have a party. That's to right. have a party, okay. To have a party. There are Thank other you. options. Yeah. And Anne is saying that her birthday was yesterday. So in English, 
I would have to say happy belated birthday, which means that it, it's not your birthday today, it was your birthday yesterday. So I'm saying happy birthday now, but it's late. And so this is the expression in English, happy belated birthday. It's wishing you a happy birthday, but it was yesterday. <laughs> and so I'd like to uh, say hello to Raul. Now you need to turn on your microphone, Raul. Hello. Hello. Please tell us where you're connecting from and what do you think of important birthdays, big birthdays? I am from Spain, in Europe also, and um, uh, I think that is it's a good idea to, to have uh, a special birthday with, with your family and friends, if it's possible. Uh, sometimes it's a, a special date um, if you are with the people uh, that love you and that you love too, uh, it's, it's nice. And I, 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 I'm, I have choose this class because I, I, I also run um, and I like uh, every birthday, uh, take a, a good, uh, a good uh, track and field uh, training and a very good uh, run with myself alone, okay. maybe 20 kilometers or, or so. Yes. Okay. And I, I like it uh, every every year. All right. Excellent. Yeah. Good, 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 good. All right. So perfect. That's exactly the, the same story as we're going to be reading. And so I'm going to move on to Rodrigo. Hello. Rodrigo, you're there? Minkoff? Rodrigo? Hello, yes. sorry, my microphone was off. Yeah, um, I'm from Argentina, South America. And here the big birthday are if you're a girl when you turn 15 mm -hmm. and if you're a boy when you turn 18 years old. Yeah, okay. um, for a girl, um, when they turn 15 years old, they choose between having a huge party or going to Disneyland for one or two weeks. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. All right. Uh, as a boy, we are not as lucky, so we just make a common party. <laughs> yeah, you just have. We, we have a, a common party, okay, an ordinary party. Yeah, all right. Okay. And why are you celebrating at 18? It's, you're, you're an adult. Uh, you have you're graduating from high school. What? Well, why do they, know, maybe, Why do the boys celebrate at both. eighteen? I think because probably both. I mean, uh, you finish high school when you're eighteen, and you start in university. Plus, um, you're an adult, and you can drink alcohol and that stuff when you turn eighteen years old. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah. And. Uh, it, is it uh, Anna or Anne? Anne. 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 Hello, Anne. Welcome. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm not like very big party in the birthday. And we uh, go in the wood and in camping. Ah, you go camping. Uh, yes. Okay. And now, so? What, so what your birthday is during the summer? Um, what? <laughs> yeah, is your birthday during the summer? Um, uh, it's it's not during the winter, is it? Yes, uh, now, yesterday. Oh, my so birthday. In, but this Ep is uh, early spring. Where 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 do you live? I live in Ukraine. Okay. Ah, so you go camping outdoors. Yes, in but the go and wood. Okay, and now is there still snow on the ground? Uh, no, with no snow. Uh, sorry. Okay. No, there's there's no snow. Okay, that's good. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you. Great. All right, and so what? We have some new people who have joined, but what I, what I'd like to do is to start the class. We can say hello to them as we begin the reading. And uh, yeah, I, I chose this story because it uh, is sort of connected to me personally. 
Uh, but of course, I welcome all, all of the students to come to my Facebook page and give me class ideas that they find personally interesting and inspiring, etc. I'm going to put the direct link to the document in the Verbling chat box again. And Ahmad, could you please read the title here uh, of our story? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> From Chicken Soup for the Soul Runners. Mm -hmm. 40 on 40 by Melissa Butler. Okay, great. And so, um, just again, I, I want to uh, clarify that this is from a series of books called the Chicken Soup for the Soul books. This particular book is a collection of stories about runners. Okay, and this story, this specific story, is called 40 on 40 and was written by a woman, Melissa Butler. Could you um, could you please read the uh, quotation for us? Okay. Uh, just remember, once you are over the hill, you begin to pick up speed. Okay. Charles Schultz. Charles Schultz. Uh, Schultz. I don't. Schultz. I, I'm not yeah. sure who that is, although it may be a famous um, cartoonist, but. Do people understand the expression in English to be over the hill? Literally, uh, over the hill. I know, but not the expression. There's another uh, means. Yeah, now, I mean, yeah, right. So this is an expression, so it's not used literally. So I'm. I'm a little bit over the hill, <laughs> so in your life you reach middle age at 40, let's say, I think in Canadian and American culture, your, your midlife is around 40 years of age. Yes. So if you're over the hill, you're kind of coming down the other side if you're older than 40. But the idea is that we should be happy because uh, he's, he's twisting the meaning of the expression to be over the hill meaning you start to gain speed as you go downhill <laughs> all right so it's sort of you get better until you get 40 and then you kind of go downhill as you get old but the other the double meaning is that you can gain speed as you go downhill so all right that's the joke uh, and so remember that it's a good thing it's a good thing to be over the hill so, uh, Ahmad, could you please read this first paragraph for us? Okay. Uh, 40 on 40, that pretty much says it all, rather than black balloons and the usual morbid celebra celebratory uh, rituals. Uh, I chose a different way to celebrate. I decided to celebrate my 40th birthday running my body into the ground. That's right, 40 miles on my 40th birthday. Equal? Mm, 64, no, <laughs> okay. uh, 64 uh, kilometers? Sorry, well, okay, but uh, then just to practice for everybody, uh, okay. to read the decimals, uh, we read each, each number separately. So it would be 64.37376. <laughs> That's the way we read the decimal numbers in English. All right. Okay. So, uh, so now, what? Why is she referring to black balloons? Uh, morbid. Now, this is a sense of humor. People are joking, but what's what's the joke here? Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, yes, go ahead, please. Sorry, whoever uh, spoke first. Uh, no, I, I think it's uh, black yeah. balloons, and it's about a ceremony when a, a person dies, like a yes. funeral. Good. And, All right. Um, okay. And and so that that originally is the tradition, but uh, not black balloons, of course, because you would yeah. never put balloons up at a funeral. But and yes. so what is the joke here? 
Uh, and it's this like, has to do with uh, American and Canadian culture. Somebody tell me what? That? Yeah. Sorry, Marcia. Because it's uh, near to the death. Near death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, we're talking about your fortieth birthday, and often because this is the midlife marking point. You are now officially over the hill and, and going down instead of coming up. Uh, people celebrate in a funny way uh, talking about the fact that you are heading towards the end of your life now. Uh, and, and so that's the joke. Now that you're 40, you're going downhill. Anybody understand? Yeah? But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so instead of the, the typical jokes uh, on their 40th birthday, what has she decided to do? Decided to run. <laughs> yeah. For, 40 kilo, 40 miles uh, for okay. his 40th birthday. Well, yeah, all right. So she wants to run 40 miles. Uh, probably this story is from the United States. And that's 64 kilometers. That's... Yeah, I hope everybody realizes that's longer than a marathon. So, hmm. that, yeah, okay, great. And so let's let's continue. Uh, and uh, Artuf, welcome. Hello, Artuf. Okay, I'm. Oh, Leila, is that you? Okay. But we can't hear you, Leila. You need to turn on your microphone. And so I'm going to give you a minute. I'll come back and check on you later, Leila. Oh, okay. She may be... <laughs> okay. And Bane, could you read this for us, please? Yes, of course. I have run every day of my life for the last 10 years. Running strengthens me in many ways, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. The world is absolutely perfect during my ra run, rain, sleet, or snow. It was 2 a.m. and I was lying in bed waiting to start my 40 miles. I had a crew of friends and supporters ready to run with me at various legs of the course, starting bright and early at 5 a.m. Okay, great. Thank you. Excellent job. And so... Are people familiar with what sleet is? And let's say, uh, do you know the expression bright and early? No. And the use of legs. Very early. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Well, actually, uh, bright and early is early. So, yeah, not very, very early, but it's early. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, depending on your definition. But 5 a.m., as really, you know, as early as possible. And what is, what is sleet? It is, um, um, <laughs> I see rain. <laughs> yeah, okay. But uh, Manel is saying that it's ice that melts before it reaches the ground. So that's pretty close. What I, yeah, sleet is rain that contains some ice. But I, I would say just a combination of rain and snow. Not really ice, but snow. Sort of half rain, half snow. That's sleet. All right, and so she loves running, runs every day, and no matter what the weather is like, the world is perfect during her runs. And the various legs of the course refers to the various parts of the course, sections legs, parts. Okay, and here's here's a marathon, I think it's in San Diego, but there was one in, in Las Vegas as well, I think, a rock and roll marathon, where when you ran the marathon, there was a different musical group playing live music every mile of the marathon. So there, uh, so I, I really think that's pretty neat. And the official distance of a marathon being a little more than 42 kilometers or a little more than 26 miles. 
very popular. Okay, and so I'd like to go to uh, Manel. Could you read this, please? Yes. Uh, okay, this minute. Official distance starts yeah. from here? No, please uh, start from at, at okay. 2.45 a.m. Okay. At 2.45 a.m., I got up and rested and emailed everyone to say I am heading out. I began my run the first six miles in the dark, not sound. It was a clear summer morning in a, uh, Iowa. Iowa. A bit, Iowa. In a, a bit uh, uh, humid, but comfortable and peaceful and motivating, knowing that I was the only creature out moving this time of the day. After about four miles and about 3.30 in the morning, a friend and a fellow biker came upon, came upon me to check and make sure I was doing okay. All right, and I'll uh, get you to stop there. Thank you. Uh -huh. Great. Thank you. And so um, uh, just let me help you with the pronunciation of dressed. The okay. ED is pronounced as quickly as possible as a T sound. Dressed. And dressed. do people know what the uh, expression is to head out? Yes. In this context? Yeah, right. So leaving or going. All right, and so her friends, I guess, uh, her friends were going to come and meet with her at 5 a.m., but when did she start? <laughs> she started at 3.30. Well, actually, no, sorry. What had she finished? What had she already done by 3.30 a.m.? Ah, uh, she... This is good grammar um, here. She had already... <laughs> she had already emailed her friends. No? Well, she had already run four miles. And this is for everybody. You can you can jump in and help here. Hello, anyone? <laughs> Comments? She start quarter to three. Sorry, Rodrigo. She start at quarter to three. Yeah. Okay. Right. At quarter to three, and so by three thirty, she had already run four miles. Yeah. But what happened at 3.30? Uh, two guys, a friend of her and another guy, uh, just catch her to check if she was okay. Okay, yeah, great. Okay. Uh, 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 well, actually, not two people, one, one person, a friend. And they are not only a friend, but they are a fellow biker. That means that this person also goes bike riding with this woman. So they, uh, a friend and fellow biker came upon me to check to make sure I was doing okay. I, th I think that's the meaning there. One, one person. Okay. And so what was it like? What was the morning like? What were the conditions like? Anybody? It was it was yeah. clear summer morning. Yeah. Okay. A bit timid, but comfortable. Okay. And and peaceful and motivated. Okay. Yeah, very quiet. All right. She was she felt that she was the only thing moving. The only creature meaning living being. Uh, that was moving at that time of the day. Okay, so she started very, very early. <laughs> That's before bright and early. So is 3.30. Okay, so let's carry on. Let's see Excuse how, me. How, uh, yes, great. May I, may I ask a question? Of course, and I, I uh, encourage everyone uh, to ask questions and make comments. Uh, I'm not sure about the phrase, uh, about the meaning of the phrase, I'm heading out. Yeah. What does it, it mean, I'm heading I'm out? Leaving. Yeah. I'm, I'm leaving the house to go run. Ah, uh, yeah. 
But yeah. in, in this context, but in general, people say, okay, sorry, I've, I've got I've to gotta head out now, which means to leave, to go. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's, a, it's a phrasal verb, to head out. Means to, uh, it, depending on the context, in this context it means to leave. Okay, great. So, uh, let's go to, uh, sorry, uh, Mario. Yeah. An hour later, I return home for a drink of water and headed back out the door. You see, I was running uh, six of um, point five miles loop six times, and uh, one miler at the end. This running ritual continued with various friends and community supporters running with me, riding their bike alongside or driving by and honking and yelling happy birthday. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> All right. And so, uh, can someone repeat the information? And do you see how she headed back out on her run? Mm -hmm. So in this context, it does mean to leave the house, but it means to sort of return back to the run. I headed back out the door, or to leave again. Right, so some very subtle meanings in those phrasal verbs. To head out, and to head back out. <laughs> okay. And how was she doing this run? And she, again, I... She, yeah, Raul? She, she's, she's going to make six uh, loops. Good. Every right. every single loop of six point five mile Good. miles. Yeah. So th that uh, that is uh, a total of thirty nine miles. So uh, she's going to do one miler at the end. Yeah, a one miler, which means a loop of one mile, a one miler. Okay, great, excellent, thank you. All right, and so she'll be able to stop at her house every loop, every lap, every 6.5 miles. Great. So, people running with her, riding their bikes alongside of her, and driving by, wishing her a happy birthday. Excuse me, I have a question. Yeah. Great. Uh, we use heading out or uh, heading back when we are talking uh, about movement? Yes. Yeah, I think that's uh, a good idea. And, uh, you know, I and let me just turn off the screen share here for a second. These native speaker phrasal verbs are really complicated. <laughs> so I think this is maybe the highest level of English, depending on the situation. And so understanding them in context is the first task. And then, as your English develops, and as you become more familiar with these phrasal verbs, then you can start using them. But at first, I think the best step is to understand them within the very specific context of the story. So, I'm going to head out on my run. So, it means she's going to leave the house, but it also means she's going to begin her run and then she came home for a drink of water but then she's gonna head back out and continue running so yeah she's gonna leave the house again and continue running so very complex meaning depending on the um, depending on the context but okay. this is one that I'm sure that you'll hear again let's head out or let's head back out um, yeah, I think you'll you'll hear this. It's quite common. All right, and so please, everyone can ask questions. And uh, sorry, uh, did you read Raúl? 
I live in a small town of about 15,000 people. The local newspaper decided to cover the history of my 40 mile run. It made the front page. I thought that was really net. But what if I didn't make it? Jikis. So I got out there and ran. <laughs> okay, good. Let me help you with the expression neat, which in this context means cool, it means good, it means, yeah, awesome. I thought that was really neat. A and then that expression is yikes. And that's what someone says when they are a little bit afraid or a little bit worried uh, because what is she worried about? What What's happening here? Uh, anybody? A, a comment? What's the information in this part of the story? Well, okay, and so, sorry, Rodrigo? Yeah, um, well, she was scared that she would appear in the front page of the newspaper of uh -huh. the town, but if she didn't make it, it was like... <laughs> it, it, it's going to be like very, very embarrassing. Yeah, okay, excellent. You, ex you explained that perfectly. Right. Okay, good. So let's, uh, and then, you know, to make it means to succeed, to finish the run. Okay, excellent. So then, uh, yeah, uh, Rodrigo, could you read this, please? Yes. Um, several hours and nights later, the day turned hot and humid. It was a typical Iowa, Iowa, uh, Iowa. Yeah. Iowa. That's the name United of a state, state in the United States, Iowa, Iowa. Iowa, okay, perfect, thank you. It was a typical Iowa July day. My friends and facers kept me entertained, and I put one foot in front of the other. I ran several marathons and made it through the first 26.2 miles. There were only 14.8 miles to go, so I kept running. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, and so uh, this is a contraction for had. Okay, at that time, she had run several marathons before. And what is your pace, or who are these people, pacers? This is important when you're running long distances. Your pace. Ah, okay. It's um, this is the the way you are uh, the length of you. Ah, okay. I uh, know. Yeah, the the length of your stride. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, not really in this context. Sorry, but it's very closely related to that. Is okay. is uh, we also take pacemaker is is the person yes. in the in the track of fields that uh, at the first part of the race yeah it so runs they, or in the head yeah. of the of the group yeah they set the pace mm -hmm. now I think they're called in English a pace setter they set the pace uh, because a pacemaker is something. Uh, uh, it's a medical device that someone has implanted in their chest okay. that regulates the beating of their heart. <laughs> That's a pacemaker okay. in English. And so uh, the pacers are friends who are running with her to keep her going at the correct pace. In, in this context, it would be the correct speed. So she doesn't want to go too fast if she's running a long distance. Now Anne's asking about a horse and yeah um, there there are a lot of different contexts but in this story her pacers, her friends and pacers, uh, they are sort of running to keep her going fast enough but not too fast. Setting the pace. Alright, great. And so putting one foot in front of the other that's an expression that we use quite a bit uh, when you just keep going. Don't focus on running 40 miles. Just think about putting one foot in front of the other. Just keep going. <laughs> All right.
And so I would like to ask Anne, could you please read this for us? Uh, one minute, please. Mm -hmm. uh, I had people allow the round who had colors on their lavens laded with loaded? water. Laded? Loaded? loaded with water and sorry. Diet? Diet. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine, Anne. Uh, just in the future, you can download the document and have it on your computer. That way, is when the screen, know? yeah, it's the the document is in the Verbling chat box, so you can copy or or sorry, you can click on that document and uh, download. I'm sorry, you can click on the link. And download uh, yes, the yes, document. Yeah. Yes, okay. I have. Uh, so I had people. One minute, one minute. I had. <laughs> I had people along the round who had chuckle and their lawns loaded with water and died down and juve. The two babies. Beverage, beverage of choice for distance runners or the last for me. Please yes? keep going. Mm -hmm. Bathrooms uh, were pretty full of the run, all the not ne needed due to the head and uh, the head. Rachon. Okay, let me help you with the pronunciation. And mm -hmm. so, root, root, Ooh. coolers, 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 mountain, 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 mountain. At, least. at least, plentiful, plentiful, although, although, heat, heat, perfect. Okay. Thank so, you. <laughs> no problem. So, uh, what what is she talking about here? And she's talking about something crazy here, but in my opinion. <laughs> but what is she saying here? Do people know what I hate are? people. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Any any. Repeat the information. Mm, I understand, but I don't say. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. Can anybody repeat the information? Hello, anybody? Help yes. me, please. Yes, good, good she needs, teamwork. She needs a uh, um, drink. Uh, she needs, it's, it's very good if the, the drink is in the, in the cooler. So yes, oh, okay. You can take uh, it. Uh, Cool. Uh, overall, if if it's uh, uh, hot weather, yeah, especially mm. especially Spe when it's uh, when it's hot. And uh, can you see that? Did I did I get that on there? Yeah. So mm. these are sort of. I think these are the coolers mm. that that she's talking about. Although there are other, um, maybe there there's another form, and but then she's a distance runner. And she drinks a diet product. I, I don't understand that. Do, do people understand what diet? Mountain Dew is a type of pop, a, a type of soda. But do you understand what diet means? Yes, it's, it's, it's difficult to, under, to understand. Normally, yeah. for, for this time, you need a very caloric drink. Right, yeah, so, you need sugar. Sugar, yeah. yes. Right, okay. And so I don't know why she would drink a diet drink, which usually they are sugar free. Mm. Yeah. And so maybe these people had the big coolers. This is a very nice one, <laughs> but full of bottles of water and cans of Diet Mountain Dew. All right. So at least for her. And then. What did she say about bathrooms? She, 
she said that uh, uh, the route was uh, plentiful of bathrooms. Yeah, so lots of people. Uh, she could use her. Uh, sorry, she could use people's bathrooms, no problem. But mm -hmm. although, and and this is the use of the word although. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm, anybody? Normally, see, see uh, the transpiration is really, really high, so she, she doesn't need to, to go to the bathroom. Right. And, and in English, here's Mountain Dew, well, sort of a new look. <laughs> so this is what Mountain Dew looks like. And, yeah, and we say uh, perspiration. Per perspiration. And That's so perfect. bathrooms were plentiful. Lots of bathrooms. She was invited to use everyone's bathroom, although she didn't need to because she was sweating a lot, she was perspiring a lot, and she was dehydrated, so she didn't need to use the bathroom. Okay, great. So, uh, now, uh, I'll come back to that later. And so, someone, uh, ah, yeah, okay, someone new. And so, let's uh, go ahead with the reading. Uh, Ahmed, could you please read this for us? Okay. My pace was slowing, but my crew was encouraging. Mile uh, 35, counting down one foot in front of the other feet, aching. Aching? Arms aching, okay. Arms heavy by my side. I was wondering why I was doing this. <laughs> then, mile 40, I was home with my crew. I began to cry from relief that it was over, that I ran 40 miles without killing myself. And most, and most importantly, that my friends took time from their busy day to spend a few hours supporting my mission because they were friends. Now that is friendship and that and okay. And that is running to me. Okay, and I'll get you to stop there. Sorry, okay. thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so uh, she did it. Awesome. Counting down the miles. Uh, yeah. And why did she cry? Because it was finally over. Yeah, she <laughs> cried. Oh, that's awesome. So she cried from relief that it was over. So a little bit of relief. Why else? There's three reasons why she was crying. <laughs> because also um, her friends went to see her and, and because yeah. she didn't die. <laughs> Yeah, to support her. Yeah, so good. So she was very thankful of that. And why else was she crying? <laughs> Maybe because she was in pain? Sorry? Uh, no, no. Sorry. Because she didn't pass away. She, she... Yes. Okay. Now, and, and she didn't... Now, this is a joke a little bit, but she was very happy and proud of herself that she was able to run the 40 miles without killing herself, which I think in this context means without having to really suffer. Okay, it wasn't incredibly difficult for her, and she didn't suffer from a lot of pain. She did say that her feet were aching, which means painful, but not seriously. Aching is not severe pain, and her arms were heavy, not, not swinging <laughs> anymore. They were heavy down by her side. All right, so she did it. She did it, which is impressive. Okay, and so let's continue reading here. Uh, uh, Artu, do you have your microphone working? Okay. No, and so I'm going to go on to, uh, hello, Bane, could you read this for us, please? Yes, of course. Uh, I realized at that moment 
that I was surrounded by a small community of people who loved and cared for me. We wrapped up the day with a great big bash at our local country club. On cloud nine, uh, sorry, on cloud nine and feeling great, I went home and thought about the wonderful day. Got up the next morning and went about my day as always, ready for the next end endeavor. I remember telling everyone that was the best birthday of my life. Okay, great. And so what 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 is she talking about here? Do you know the phrasal verb to wrap up something in this context? To to end and to yes, finish to the day. It, to finish yes. it, yes, absolutely. And okay. so what did she do? Sorry, to wrap up something in this context means to finish something or end, to finish the day, to end the day. Mm -hmm. With a great bash. And what does that mean? With a great big bash. Bash. A party. Uh, a yes, party. A yeah. Party. So yeah. in this context, a bash is a party. Do you know what the expression to be on cloud nine means? Yeah, no. so happy. Yeah, incredibly happy. You're kind of like you're in heaven, yes, okay. is, is the idea. Okay, and so she just went on with her life. Uh, but then, okay, a little extra here. And so, uh, Manel, could you read this, please? Yes. And then, several days later, it was brought to my attention that I was one of the top blogged people in New Newton that week. I questioned why I was being blogged in the local paper. So being human, I had to go online and check it out. Many blogs were supportive, uh, just a minute, uh, were supportive and encouraging. But just one, two negative comments can rip your heart out. <laughs> okay, so uh, what happened? What is she talking about? And this is brand new English. <laughs> The term uh, being blogged. <laughs> blogged yes. I guess she was online. She yeah. like on Google. Yeah. Right, and so uh, or or maybe not Google, but yeah, uh, like Facebook or Twitter. Um, yeah, and and maybe some people write popular blogs that other people read, and so she was one of the big stories that week. All right, and so. Uh, all of or most of it was very supportive and encouraging, but there I guess there were a couple of negative comments, and that hurt her emotionally. Uh, this is pretty serious stuff, but <laughs> she says that it ripped her heart out. <laughs> so uh, the I, I need to to sh say this. So if something rips your heart out, it takes it right out of your body. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> she was she was hurt by the negative comments. But whatever. Uh, let's uh, let's keep reading here. So uh, uh, Mario, could you read this for us please? Yes. This is what uh, was written. Uh, who does she think she is? Paris Hilton? running around the town in practically nothing uh, she's insane and isn't there anything else going on in town that's more important this is ridiculous news <laughs> okay so some pretty negative comments just uh, what what is the this is a little difficult I can recognize that this is a little difficult to understand. So who does she think she is? Paris Hilton running around the town in practically nothing? What what are they talking about? Her outfit? Yes. So the people are commenting on her outfit, her clothing, meaning I guess she wasn't wearing a lot of clothing. All right. So and then yeah, somebody saying, what a ridiculous story. Uh, isn't there anything more important going on in this town? All right. And so uh, let's uh, uh, get uh, Raul. Could you read this next section for us? Sorry, 
Sorry, turn on your microphone, Raul. Sorry. Sorry. We can hear you. The numerous, with the numerous positive comments and supporters, just two negative blocks brought me down, but not for long. You see, a lesson was learned for the, from this experience. I learned that not only could my body endure, endure 40 long miles completed in 7.5 hours, but my mind could endure the 40 miles. I realized that life is about what you think and what you say to yourself when you are alone. Okay, and that's the end of the story. All right, great. And so she proved something to herself. She proved that both her body and her mind could endure the 40 miles and the seven and a half hours of running. But what about this last comment? What, what do you think about her final comment here? Anyone? I think it's... Uh, so, yes, yeah. Yeah. She's, yeah. He's, um, still, he's still positive. Yes? Yeah. Definitely. And Manel, did you have a comment? Yes, I think uh, she's saying something like uh, uh, your achievements in life or what you will do in life depends on uh, your the attitude you have toward yourself. For example, exactly. if you encourage yourself to do something great, you will do it. If you keep uh, uh, like bringing down yourself, you will end up doing nothing and you will be a loser, just like you think you are. Yeah, okay, great, yeah. And I think it's, a so, uh, it's related to the people who made the negative comments because uh -huh. those did hurt her. But then she learned a lesson from receiving those negative comments. And I think the lesson is it doesn't matter what other people say about what I do. It's what I say to myself. It's what I think and what I say to myself. And so she thought it was important for her to do this run and that's she's the only one that's important <laughs> that's that's about her life okay great and so some comments please uh you it, it and and do you have a comment about the story <clears throat> hello Yes, Anne. Yes. Uh, do you uh, have Do you have a comment? I'm. 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 Say. Sorry. Uh, second. I you, think uh, this girl is uh, have uh, this girl uh, have forest. Run, forest, run. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So you think she is like Forrest Gump? Yes, yes. From the movie. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. Good, good. Well said. And Rodrigo, a comment from you? It's a really nice story. Uh, I wonder if it's a true story or just a novel. Good. Now, uh, these books, the idea is that all of the stories are true true and that okay. essentially all of the stories or almost all of the stories are written by the person who experienced the stories and so yeah I'm sure if I, I didn't do it for this story but I'm sure if you searched on the Google internet you could find those news stories about her running uh, okay. yeah that's pretty cool yeah yeah also I think they are quite meaningful cause like they Teach you stuff like be strong, think about yourself, keep your ego high, and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, try not to say keep your ego high. Ego, a big ego is negative in English. What you say is you want to try and keep your confidence high. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Having you. a big ego has a negative connotation in English. And right. so, Raul, Raul, what do you think? What, yeah. what birthday are you getting close to? I'm 39. Oh, okay. So I, in one month, I will be running 40 miles. 
<laughs> oh, really? Okay. Uh, well, you can no. make it 40 kilometers if you want. That's that's a little easier. 40, 42 kilometers for the 42 anniversary. Okay. For your birthday? For your 42nd birthday? But it's true. This year, uh, the um, two days before of my uh, birthday, I'm going to compete in a uh, almost 60 kilometers. Meters uh, oh. competition. It's true. Great. <laughs> Not wow. only running, also bike and yeah, we um, yeah we cycle. don't. This is a, a triathlon. No, it's an or, adventure race. Oh, an uh, you adventure race. You have to. Okay. You, you got a. You, you have a map, and you you have to find any points in 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 the in the, in the map. Right. So. Normally, you don't know the distance exactly, but more or less, it takes uh, seven or eight hours okay. and 60 kilometers. A an adventure race. <laughs> yeah, great. This is the Ironman yes. triathlon. So swimming, cycling, and running. And the distances are impressive. Mm -hmm. So you swim almost two and a half miles, 3.8 kilometers. You cycle over 180 kilometers and then you run a marathon and so a lot of people in North America are well a lot of people in the world but a lot of people in North America test themselves with this okay and so we're out of time but I hope everyone enjoyed that story these kinds of stories written by native speakers are full of the grammar and the expressions and the vocabulary that all of you need to learn if you want to take your English to that final level. So I hope that you found it interesting. I, I hope that you take the time to read the story again uh, at mm. some point. And I hope to see you soon in my, my next class. Okay. Talk to you Thank soon. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. You great participation. Take care. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. That Thank always you. means everything. Congratulations.